What tools and strategies can inspire climate action? How can art in dialogue with science contribute to the key transformational processes of our society? Climate change as a phenomena can appear as something separate of ourselves and solutions as mainly technocratic ones, growing the gap between knowledge and action. Climate change challenges human perception for various different reasons. If we consider it as massively distributed in space and time, we need new tools of perception to imagine and see climate change in our usual surroundings, even when it is happening around us. In this sense, the International Idea League Summer School 2022 at RWTH Aachen University was about exploring collaborations between different fields, crossing disciplinary, institutional or even national boundaries. In our collaborations, we used art-based methodologies to imagine and explore new ways of narrowing the gap between knowledge and action. Our premise was that we must start with ourselves, our own situatedness, our physical being as a measure of relating to climate change. Then we can see ourselves as deeply connected and entangled with our environment. Sustainable change can only occur if we relate ourselves to the challenges as well as the solutions. We all feel like helpless, you know, it's so difficult to interfere, what can I do about it? So we want to distort this idea, no, each of us can do something about it, and it can be a very humble, very small-scale intervention, but make a huge impact, uh, generate dialogue and discussion. The potential of art-based approaches is to create sensual emotional experiences, therefore potentially interrupting everyday life and opening up deadlocked horizons of expectation. Yeah, it's really an interesting uh, issue uh, to bring together uh, people from different countries with different backgrounds are working artistically together with us uh, on this overarching topic of climate change. I'm here as an artist to work together with students from science and to really test this experiment together. How can art meet science as two equal partners and to start a real dialogue? So um, it's an experiment for everybody here and we find ourselves in the middle of a real labor, a living laboratory, where we test strategies and content to come together. We've reinterpreted this campus in a way and we call it Super Arc C. So it's like a vessel we want to take into the future. We want to really test strategies that will get us into a future, a better future than it is now. And we really see art as the perfect medium to start help us imagine, tell stories, really bridge this gap of where we stand now and where we want to get to. The premise of our working method was that we each possess tools in relating to climate change. We understand tools here not simply as technical devices to immediately mitigate a problem. Rather, we think of them as broader mechanisms, including ideas, concepts and a change in perspective that can influence how we look at and approach a problem. We collected and introduced visual signs of the climate crisis, such as burnt plants, into different settings in order to reference the urgency of the situation. By paying close attention to the natural elements around us, personal contemplation and reflection were encouraged. The alarm is on. There is no way to escape. Its sound brings the reality of a dry planet closer to our life. But the fear that is something so far beyond our control paralyzes us. The solution is within ourselves. We have the strength to find the path, to stop following the pattern that fast living cities have taught us. We just need an element in our challenging environment to have a quiet moment of reflection, to think out of the box.
Working with permeable tent-like constructions that seemed to become a second skin to us created a further tool for sensing climate change. At times, these constructions were a means with which to retreat and refuel one's own energy. And at others, they became a tool with which to connect to and experience one's environment anew. The architectural shelters turned into a sensor and connector with which to feel the city and the weather in a very immediate way. It's weird. I don't usually think about my skin. It's always with me. I imagine what would it feel like without my skin on. I feel safe inside. It could be sunny, but it could also be rainy. It doesn't matter. I feel its interaction with the outer world. I can hear how the wind touches it. I can see the play of light and shadow. There are a lot of people around. Many others have a similar skin, but I can see some others seem different. We share our thoughts and observe everything around, all under the cover of our skin. We try to source materials that would otherwise be discarded, such as plastic and further rubbish, to reference the idea of circularity. Simple materials that could be used for DIY structures. It was important for us to act into the structure of the city as well as that of the university campus in order to make people curious, to create interruptions and to open a space for dialogue beyond the campus setting. I begin the story of my life with a question. Am I really useless? You all know me very well, as I am commonly found around you. I come in millions, I live long, and I don't want to harm anyone. I am strong, flexible, and I know I could protect you. Please, give me another chance. Give me a new life. Help me to help you. Drawing on our personal stories and experiences in relation to climate change made the global phenomenon concrete, local and urgent. Sharing experiences contributed to a changing awareness that climate change is real and already happening in our lives. Um, I think it was this, this morning that I woke up, like a normal day. Um, I... I went like every day I went through my Instagram watching news and videos and um there were these videos coming up showing um flood happening and I really feel like a sense of belonging it was a it was a shocking moment for me watching all those buildings and valuable histories falling apart and drowning and water was everywhere in the streets that I used to walk and pass by. And I think that was the moment that I realized that something is serious here and something changed inside me. Action and repetition, humor and staging, have the potential to break through habits of seeing and to direct our gaze from distance and abstraction to proximity and the concrete and ultimately back to ourselves. Staging small daily habits lets us reflect on their larger impacts. How many things do I consent to while writing this? I consent to trees being purposely planted. I consent to trees being watered and raised. 
I consent to trees being cut. I consent to wood being chipped and pulp being created. I consent to paper being transported by trucks for kilometers. I consent to devote 17 minutes of my work to earn enough money to buy a block of white sheets. All this to gain the right to fold, cut, write, and draw on this paper as much as I want. For this, tomorrow I will consent to someone else taking care of my waste. I want consent to be fair. I want to negotiate beyond all in or all out. I want to disagree and still be part of the process. I want to consent 90% and I want the 10% back. So I choose to trust you, I choose to ignore. The summer school was a laboratory in which to question the role of the university as a flagship for sustainable developments. It allowed us to test and develop new forms of international and interdisciplinary collaborations. Through this experiment, we were able to bring together individual perspectives and translate them into images of change in the form of concrete, spatial experiences. In doing so, we began to shape a version of our future in the now. In the end, the central question remains. How can we now begin to plan our next steps towards creating a desirable and climate-resilient future?